my mum tells me that ever since I was two, I've had this fascination with computers and technology, how they work, what is inside them, and what they are now capable of. Part of this fascination is how technology is changing and developing so quickly. Look how far we've come since the first computers. In 1969, when NASA put man on the moon, it was achieved with only nine megabytes of computing power, and the computers they used were so big they filled five living rooms. While visiting the Johnson Space Center in Houston, I learned from a NASA guide that today's average smartphone has enough computing power to simultaneously launch, manage, and control 10,000 Apollo moon missions. Isn't that incredible? It's a shame there's no app for that yet. <laughs> Technology is becoming increasingly integrated into our lives: smart homes, virtual reality, augmented reality. And the Internet of Things, and then there are robots, the big ones that assemble cars and whole parts of buildings, and the small ones that make your phone or laptop. In Russian, robot literally translated means job or worker, or according to the Oxford Dictionary, a machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically, especially one programmable by a computer. Today, we already have robots that can cook for you, help you walk again, do complex surgeries with precision, and do your accounts. Unfortunately, there are negatives to all that progress. The World Economic Forum predicts that 800 million jobs will be lost by 2030 because of automation. It sounds scary, especially for any accountants in the room. The future of employment seems uncertain. As many traditional jobs have disappeared by the time I finish university, but this is not the first time in history that automation was to blame for job losses. Just think of the introduction of automated looms in the 1800s, or the development of improved agricultural machinery like tractors. Innovation and new industries were created, and with it, new and different jobs. This tweet teaches us that change is inevitable. But change is happening now at such an incredible rate that progress seems to overtake us. I watched a clip on the internet the other day, where a leading economist Jack Ma said something very true: "If we don't adapt the way we teach, we'll be in big trouble 30 years from now. Education is still the same as it was for the last 200 years. It is knowledge-based. We cannot teach our children to compete with machines because they are smarter." We have to teach unique skills, so machines cannot catch up with us. What do we need to teach? He believes we need to teach truly human skills like values, beliefs, independent thinking, teamwork, care for others, sports, and arts. As knowledge alone cannot teach you that. When my parents went to school, they were told that if you work hard and get good grades. You will go to university and get a job for life. It is becoming clear that this is no longer true. Just having good grades in school won't secure a job or a steady income. The job market is changing so rapidly that entire segments of our economy are now becoming obsolete or have been taken over by automation. So, if we can't outsmart robots and machines, what can we do? I believe we need to learn to build them, design them, control them. Set their ethical parameters and program them. And to achieve that, I believe we should introduce these skills in schools as early as possible. And how can we do that? By introducing robotics. I bet by now you're wondering how I come to have an opinion on all of this. I am a founding member of Nakibots, a local robotics club. I was introduced to robotics at the age of nine. When I attended a VexIQ robotics workshop with a couple of friends, we were asked to build a remotely operated robot that could pick up, sort, and stack colored cubes. We absolutely loved the complexity and challenge of building robots, leading us to start a local club, calling it Nakibots. We entered many regional and national competitions, winning the national title for the last three years. We got the chance to represent New Zealand, and more importantly, Taranaki, in the Robotics World Championships in the USA. 
Turns out we are pretty good too, placing in the top 10 out of over 1,600 teams in the last two years. Being involved in robotics has taught our team a variety of skills in a very short time, and they will help us on our way throughout our lives and prepare us for tomorrow's challenges. Let me tell you why I think that. Robotics can teach a range of skills, including problem solving, creative thinking, teamwork, communication skills, and digital literacy. Not to mention science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths, or more commonly referred to as STEAM. But how? Let me take you back to the 4th of December, 2017. Our team, the Nakibots, had just won the National Team Up Championship and were still full of excitement as this meant we qualified to go to the Robotics World Championships in the USA for the third year in a row. We had won with 135 points, but doing our homework, we found that some Chinese teams were scoring over 400 points in their Team Up matches. We had some work to do. We had to build a better robot and start from scratch. The aim of the challenge called Ringmaster, the 2017-2018 game, was to score as many points as you could in one minute by moving colored rings around a field. Rings started in predetermined positions and had to be lifted and placed on poles to score points. Each ring on a pole was worth five points, and if they were all the same color, there were 10 points each. There was also a bonus tray. When released by pushing both triggers on the side, it would let forth another 15 rings and award another 20 points. We realized that we would have to develop a robot that could move swiftly and sort the rings automatically to be able to even get close to topping the Chinese team's score. To start all over again was hard, but necessary. First, we all gathered around a whiteboard and developed ideas on a new robot. Developing a robot to rise to the challenge was interesting. Using creative thinking, problem solving, and teamwork, we decided on the essential parts we need first. A drivetrain, a way of picking up rings, and a way to sort the colors. Next, we brainstormed how to build those essential parts. Figuring out how to assemble a sorter, drivetrain, and conveyor involved science, technology, engineering, arts, maths, and creative thinking, and lots of it. Once we had conceptualized our ideas, we started prototyping, putting bits together to see what worked best. <coughs> Building the final robot felt like the never-ending story. There was always something to change or add, and we were constantly redesigning or strengthening our robot. Now it was my turn to shine. Being the team programmer, all that was left to do was to program the robot how the drivers felt it worked best, change the controls so that it streamlined the driving, and adding shortcuts to speed up certain tasks. Doing the team programming helped me gain a deeper insight into the technology involved, and gave me a good chance to apply digital literacy to maximize the robot's efficiency. I would like to point out that all of this is done by kids like me. Vex Robotics, the organization that runs the competition, has a hands-off policy. All of the building, designing, developing, and driving has to be done by the kids with no adult help. This even extends over fundraising efforts, as all of the sponsorship communications has to be done by the students. At long last, it was time to pack up our robot, grab our luggage, and fly over to the USA for the Robotics World Championships. All our hard work in advance did help, but it wasn't over yet. On arrival, we found that the robot had been crushed in its box. But thankfully, we had spent so much time working on it that we knew it inside out and got it fixed. After four days and ten matches, plenty of which were with teams whose language we couldn't speak, we came out 7th in division and ninth in the finals. Not bad for a tiny team from Taranaki. Thank you.
So why am I telling you all of this? Because I feel that my involvement in robotics has given me a head start into my own future, teaching me skills I can build on through life in the many years to come. Whether we like it or not, computers, automation, technology, and robots will always be part of our lives, and will always be smarter, faster, and more efficient than a human in many areas. If we don't be left behind by technology, we can't be reduced to spectators. Instead, get involved with technology, evolving and working alongside it. And I think robotics is a pathway to achieve that. My dad's favorite quote is by Sun Tzu in The Art of War. Know your enemy and know yourself, and in a hundred battles, you'll not be defeated. Or, my updated version, know technology and know yourself, and in a hundred years, you're not being unemployed. <laughs> Thank you.